Hi, I'm Tom and welcome. In this video, I'll be going over how to set up your iPad to use with your S-Series desk. Firstly, requirements. These are detailed in the Digico app manual, but I will go over them now. iPad 2 or later, iPad mobile data should also be switched off when using the Digico S app. Make sure it's on iOS 7 or later. And of course, a wireless access point with a minimum speed of 150 megabytes per second. And lastly, console software version 1.4 or later, please. Let's connect the router to the desk. We can use one of two methods, the first being DHCP. Firstly, set the wireless access point to DHCP mode. Consult your router's manual for instruction on this. Set the console to receive an IP address via DHCP. Navigate to settings and press DHCP renew. Wait until a valid IP address is displayed near the Digico logo button. On the iPad, go to settings, Wi-Fi, and select the relevant wireless access point. In the Wi-Fi configuration page, select DHCP. Check the DNS entry. If not automatically populated, then please enter 8888 as your DNS value and enter a search domain of google.com. The second method is with static IP addresses. Firstly, set the wireless access point to have a static IP within the same subnet as the console. For example, I'll use 192.168.1.10 with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. Set the console to have a static IP address within the same subnet as the wireless access point. So for example, 192.168.1.11 with the same subnet mask. Select the system tab and type the information in the set IP address manually. Now set the iPad to have a static IP address in the same subnet as the wireless access point and console. For example, 192.168.1.12 with the same subnet mask. In the Wi-Fi configuration page, select static. Now follow what we did on the DHCP setup. Enter a DNS of 8888 and enter a search domain of google.com. Once set up, we can connect the iPad to the desk via the S-Series app. On your console, select Extensions, select iPad. Now, enable iPad Control by pressing the button at the top of the panel. Remember to disable this function when iPad Control is not required. Enter the iPad's IP address. Enter send and receive port numbers for the console. For example, send is 9000, receive is 8000. Let's navigate back to the S-Series iPad app. In the connection window, enter the S-Series console IP address as noted in the console's iPad configuration panel. Enter send and receive port details for the iPad. Remember, these will be related to the numbers you put on the S-Series console. A button will now display the console model and name. Tap on this button to now connect to the desk. If this button does not display, you have not configured the desk or router correctly. When a valid connection has been created, it will automatically create an item in the connections list. Recall this by touching the connections button and selecting that connection from the list. Additional new connections are created by touching the plus button on the right of the screen. Thanks for listening and check out my other videos for more basic information on how to set up and use your S-Series console.
Hi, I'm Tom and welcome. In this video, I'll be going over version 2.2 and how it builds on existing software, providing some exciting new features and capabilities. Firstly, two exciting new DMI card modules are now available on version 2.2. The DMI AMM card and the DMI ME card. The AMM card is Digico's 48 channel automatic microphone mixing card designed in direct response to requests from the corporate market. The DMI AMM card will benefit any production where complex vocal mic setups are in use. There will be a dedicated video on the AMM card coming soon. The ME card offers a 40 output interface to Allen Heath ME1 or ME500 personal mixers. The S series now has Avium and ME compatibility. Here are the other features on version 2.2. Rack receive only mode. Perfect if sharing one stage box between two mixers. Turn this on to prevent the IO rack's input socket gain from changing on your surface. Snapshot fade across fades. Fade across fades between snapshots can now be utilized. Perfect for theater use. Simply tap on the fade across fades button within the sessions of the snapshots window. Select the channels you wish to add a fade across fade to and use the bottom right hand rotary to add a value. Press confirm crossfades to add. You can instantly select all input channels, all channels, reset the channel to zero seconds and add different time values to different faders. Control group spill allows up to 10 predefined members of a control group to be spilled on any console section using a single button function. To set this up, navigate to the control group, tap the top of the channel and you will see orange borders around the first 10 channels in the control group. These are the channels that will be spilled to the surface. Edit spill selection mode allows configuring on the channels to be spilled and the order of them. The order can be changed by dragging the channel boxes. The channels to be spilled can be changed by selecting or deselecting them when in this edit mode. Channel order, spill selection and CG members can be saved on a per snapshot basis. Navigate to preferences and in this window, select the control group spill screen to determine which screen the channels will appear on. Select solo preferences and under control group solo button control, select whether soloing the control group will solo members, open spill or solo and open spill. Lastly, OSC control of snapshots. OSC messages can be transmitted from the console when a snapshot is fired or a snapshot can be fired when an incoming OSC message is received. This will work with show control softwares that use the OSC platform. Thanks for listening and check out my other videos for more basic information on how to set up and use your S-Series console. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome. In this video, I'll be taking you through the preferences window on your S-Series desk. Navigate to preferences by tapping on the main menu button and select preferences. Let's start on the reassign master fader button. This allows you to change the master fader with any other channel. Change this to a solo bus if using the desk at monitors, for example. Control group spill screen. Allows you to choose which screen the spilled members of your control group will appear. Select this to change where on your console you view the channels. Work surface preferences. Select this to change to activate the following options. Aux on faders, a method of activating sends on faders. Disable snapshot buttons. Disables the quick fire next and previous buttons on the work surface. AMM weights on faders. This allows the weighting of your channels when using the automatic microphone mixer DMI card to be brought onto the faders. Disable master mute disables the mute button above the master fader. Global tap tempo. This activates the global tap tempo rotary on the right hand side of the desk. There is a macro for this function. Solo preferences allows you to choose what soloing a channel will do, such as solo selects channel, selects the channel as well as soloing it. Solo assigns auxes. Soloing an aux channel will bring sends on faders or rotaries. Control group solo button control allows you to choose what soloing control group does. For example, solo members. 
just silos the members of your control group. Spill members, just spills the members of your control group. Silo and spill members, silos and spills members of your control group. Last option is meter preferences. This allows you to change how the meters react by adjusting the attack, release and peak hold settings. Thanks for listening and check out my other videos for more basic information on how to set up and use your S-Series console.